The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. This is the 11 o'clock to 12 uh, session of the Tiger family. And we're looking at a Dow that's up 46 at 18,024. S&P's up 7.5 at 2107. Comp index is up 28 at 5,099. The VIX is down at 1299. That's a huge drop from 20 down to the 12s. In days, that's that's huge. Uh, we're looking at the gold contract and now. We've got gold. Uh, the GLD is down 14 cents at 110.84, and this is very interesting because the uh, we've got gold itself down just about 50 cents at 11.5490, and silver is at this particular point down 10 cents at 15.35. Now, why I say it's interesting is that the dollar. Let me show you this, the dollar DXY, which is at uh, 96.72, down 14 cents. It's kind of struggling right here on this trend line. And you would think that gold would take that, that, that kind of hesitancy to at least attempt to stabilize. And if you look at the, the gold contract itself, look at the, look at the dollar left-hand corner over here. Let me just move this a little bit so that you don't think that that's there that's not a that's just a, um, an arch formation sorry a cup formation and as there's, there's that resistance in the dollar right there that declining trend line and once again you see the same thing in the the, the body of the candle rather than the wick we can put it on the wick and I'll show you something else that means that if the dollar takes out tomorrow or the next day takes out 97.20 9724 is the left side high in the 9730s um, the currency itself starts to break out and it, it really improves the weekly chart for the cup formation. So if we go to the gold contract, the nine period exponential moving average has just been extraordinary resistance, not since it had closed way back at the little recovery high of the 19th of June at 12.04, has gold been able to close above the nine period moving average. That's for one, two, three, five, seven, eight, nine, seven, eight, twelve, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty. It's about twenty, twenty-one sessions. Gold is not closed above the nine period exponential moving average. It should attempt to do that in the next day or two, but it's getting harder and harder with a flat stochastic. So let's go on. Bonds. Bonds at this particular point are uh, down two thirty seconds at 149 and three uh, thirty seconds in the continuous contract. Here as well, Bonds have not closed above. This is the weekly chart since the week of the 17th of April at 164, 930 seconds. Since then, not once. Even that big spike up uh, last week to 154, 23, 30 seconds could not. Um, it, it could not, in fact, hold that nine period exponential moving average, which is now at one, let's call it 151. And bonds are at 149 and 430 seconds. So it's going to be this is the 120 minute chart. Let me just move it out, and you'll see that this is a really important period because bonds have this trend line support. And if bonds close July underneath what it's at 149, just two points lower, 147. Um, I like to give it a little bit of room. Let's call it 146, 146 and 530 seconds or lower. That's going to suggest that that trend line is not holding and that the TYX, that multi-decade um, downtrend in the 30-year T-bond yield, which is trading at 32.09 right now, 3.209%, um, is going to be rallying up towards the trend line um, from the 32s to the 38s, maybe test the 39.76 high. That was made back in at the, just as we um, right there, the, um, December of 2013, as we were going from 2013 to 2014. So uh, this is going to be very interesting. Now, um, 
And a couple of other things I want to look at. So you've got the euro, same thing as gold, just struggling here. Uh, it's holding okay. It's just underneath the nine period moving average, but it's really not showing too much strength. And crude oil, which had been down earlier based on the Iran um, uh, potential for the Iran agreement to go through, um, is at 52.31, up 11 cents after being down quite a bit earlier on. So there's some some support that's being attributed to um, crude oil, perhaps being a little bit independent of the agreement since you still got to ratify a whole bunch of things to go on. So in the meantime, back at the ranch, this is very impressive. Look, the IWM right there is up 58 cents, gapped up yesterday, and today is having a follow through to the upside. I, I must say that, let me just do this here. The weekly chart, I'm going to expand this. Look, the weekly chart has been in this trading range since April. Uh, well, I, I can go back and say that since the low of March at 119 in the 119.80 area, all the way to the 129, was it? 129.10 high of the week of the 26th of June. It's just been in this range up and down and up and down, just like most of the indices. What I am looking at here and what I'd say to the subscribers of my opening call is that we've got resistance. I'm anticipating at best that we see a doji type candle today. That is, wherever we go on the upside, it won't be that far in the Dow. And then we'll come back to maybe not unchanged, but close to unchanged, forming a little doji, uh, a doji candle. That's a small uh, a candle with uh, a small body where it opens and closes at the same about the same price and a wick up and a wick to the downside. Sometimes it's what I call a long wick. The Kiara was a very small wick, beautiful top right there on the 19th of May at 18,351.36. That was the Dow's high. Now look at this trading range. I had spoken yesterday about, I was very pleased that over the period of time, I've been able to say that the, the market itself had very limited upside. And that while I was anticipating that there should be a sharper pullback to the downside below the 17,500s um, into at least 17,000, but probably into the 16,000s as well. All that's happened is that we've usurped energy by taking time rather than price, trading between a, a trading band between the 18,200s and the 17,500s with one little nick to the upside, one little nick to the downside. And that essentially says you can sometimes use price. And that could be the consolidation that you've used up uh, a very quick move to the downside. You've plunged to the downside, in fact, and You've got rid of all the shorts, and now the longs can come back in and start a new move to the upside. Sometimes what you do is you're just using sideways action. You're using the pullbacks to either buy stocks like the IBB, which today made another new all-time high. That's the Biotex. Or um, you're trying to short, as one would be doing in the semiconductor index, which has been um, a very poor maxim for the uh, uh, the, the high tech sector. Um, now, what's also very interesting is that I made a big deal today about the XLF, and the XLF is the S and P Select Financials. Actually, it's holding really well. I thought it would be a little bit of a pullback to give us a chance, maybe tomorrow, to enter it. But no. So, in this particular sideways consolidation, even though there's been very limited upside, the fact is there's been really limited downside. So you've got a pattern that says we've used up time to rotate through the different sectors. And as such, you found that there are some stocks that are very weak, but within the sector, the leaders continue to be leaders in the, in the best sectors, and the weak ones continue to be the weak ones. And looking at the XLF, let's just do that right now. The XLF right there. Whoa, look at that, up uh, eight cents when it was a little weak earlier on. Um, and that, that's good. That's very good action for the weekly chart. And look at this monthly, the way it's been holding. And that's been saying that if, in fact, there is a tendency towards higher rates, banks should benefit. That's kind of the traditional way of looking at it. And it seems on the chart 
But that's not a bad way to look at it. So you do have some leadership. Now, when I go to my GE, my Dow Quartet, GE has a nice candle today. It really doesn't look very good on the chart at all, but a nice candle. IBM, let's see where that is, <clears throat> had a very nice move from the 162 area into the 169s, and today it's at 168.47, pulling back a little bit. Um, so it's kind of okay. It's not a great looking chart. Triple M was a fantastic leader, and now it's just taking this, taking its time to digest a good candle here. But actually, the weekly chart's still very poor. And UTX, my uh, other than GE, G is my short-term pilot light indicator. UTX is more intermediate. That's saying, hey, don't get too carried away here. Um, everything's not okay because you've got a one-to-one -one potential here. This is the A to B equals C to D. Look at this. A to B equals click right there. And in the chat wave, this is this is one of those techniques that I use where, oh, it's already done it. One, A to B equals C to D. So it went to trough A, trough B, trough C, trough D. So we've already completed that move. The stochastic is still only at 12% in UTX, United Technologies. And um, yeah, I, I'd say that it's, it's, it's got a problem. It needs to consolidate here for a little bit longer. So this is a very select move. So what I'd say to subscribers on my opening call is I expected that today there'd be some kind of a doji candle. And that'll be tomorrow into Thursday. That's going to be absolutely important because if there is a doji, well, first of all, if there's a very strong up candle by the end of the day, you, you, you cannot deny that three days like this in a row, even if there's a pullback, is very strong action. The market is discounting any bad news. So any bad news that comes along will impact the market. But at this particular point, it's saying, I don't care. I'm doing OK. That's number one. Number two is my expectation was that there would be a doji, a small candle today by the end of the day. And that where we go tomorrow is going to, if there is a move of, of, of minus 80 or a plus 80 Wednesday, or if there's just another doji candle and then the, that happens Thursday, that's going to be very important because if there's a, a period of rest later today going into tomorrow and then there's a strong move up, let's say, you know what, there's a chance that the Dow could go towards, I don't know about making it, but towards the old high that the, um, uh, the S&P can do the same thing. If there's a breakdown, that's going to say choppy, choppy, choppy. Don't get too carried away. Selectivity is the main thing that you want to be looking for. And that's the way we'd be uh, trying to understand how, in fact, um, even though there are a couple of weak links, how the market could go higher. And that has to do with a couple of things. But the most important is if the VIX index, which uh, had a spectacular move up to 20.05, when this VIX index goes to these big moves up and then pulls back, it sometimes takes a little while before it regenerates another big up move. And that's something to consider here. That would be very positive for the market. I'll be back. Basil Chapman will talk about my upcoming webinar Monday the 20th and what we'll be talking about and why. Be right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They they believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. 
Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, hi, folks. We're back. Dow's up 48. S&P's up 7.5. Now, this is going to be very interesting. The IBB, which we've been trading uh, for one user subscribers, we did take some profit in the short position that we had. Yesterday, we stopped out. And um, now it's going higher. And we've stepped aside, and we're just going to wait here because um, the breakout that just occurred above the 385.02 all-time high is very important. It extends the leg D in the monthly chart, but it's more important because you've got a doji candle. So we're closed decisively above 385.02 in July, suggests you could have a spike to the upside in August. And then you've got to be careful because you could be ready. That's the way this little doji would work for me. It could become a halfway marker. I'm not sure there's enough strength in all of these. There are a couple of uh, uh, biotech stocks that are doing fabulously. Some of the laggers are still lagging. And what's really important, and I, I've said this for some time, that if you if you have a portfolio I, of with with um, the especially the big cap biotechnology stocks, I don't want to be the one to say, hey, get out of it. You were the one that got in. And you got in very well and you've made a bundle. But I did want to say it's not a bad idea to take something off. Why? Because as you're going to highs, especially all time highs, unless you're very aggressive and that's where you want to actually double up because he's saying breaking out to all time highs, there's no resistance. This is actually the time where just prudent money management says take something off because if it goes higher, it'll more than make up for the, for the, for the bit that you take off. And that's kind of the way I still feel about it. 
Uh, but the stochastic in the weekly chart is at 80 percent, and the MACD is attempting to cross positive. You see, before it kept deflecting lower, and the technicals, therefore, are okay. They're not great, but the price is acting very well above the nine-period expansion moving average, except for one little thing, that if you draw a trend line, if you say had a Bollinger Band at a percentage above the nine-period exponential moving average, just within this area, it's at 385, within the area of 388 to maybe 401 or 402, that's where we once again become very extended. So I, I probably what I should have done is I should have said, if the IBB takes out our buy stop, for a gain, a small gain, but a gain nevertheless. It was a much bigger gain just uh, recently, which we didn't take. We did take on uh, other positions. But this is very important. Why? Because what I should have said is, if it takes it out, there should be enough energy to push to retest the highs. Let's go into the long position, which we've done before. But I did not do that. And now it makes it so much more difficult. Why? Because even though it seems to be breaking out, the technicals are such that the price is dragging the technicals higher. It's not really going up in the shorter term based on the technicals. It's going up on the price. However, when you look at the monthly chart, see this monthly chart right here? Way above the 9 period moving average, MACD is just spectacular. It's holding steady, and the stochastic is at 88%. And what I would be expecting is that if I was correct that there was a, a much deeper correction coming in the IBB, breaking the 357 support, going to the 353 area, then you would have seen the daily drag down the weekly technicals even more. And that in turn would have started the decline in the uh, MACD and stochastic in the, in the monthly chart. So far, that hasn't happened. So once again, it can go up about another... Uh, three to seven points, right? And then we'll have to reassess. And the support now is raised just on the very short term to, uh, it's at 385, to the 378 to 376 area, just on the very short term. Okay, now, um, what I wanted to also do is this. So uh, the semiconductor index. Uh, the semiconductor index is really struggling here. We are still, we have a very small short left in the uh, estimation. We took really great profits there. But most importantly, the reason why I wanted to bring it up is that the SMH is the semiconductor index. So today there was a report that MU, MU is not traded anymore, is it? Isn't it a private company? Oh, there it is. Okay, MU, uh, Micron Technologies, uh, semis. No, it's Dell that could take in private. So MU is my, Micron Technologies. Uh, had a horrible chart, and then all of a sudden there's news today that I think a Chinese company or something like that wanted to take them over. So it is up 2.12 at 1973 MU, Micron Technologies, Semiconductor Industry, um, up 12%. Look at that big spike. But it really hasn't done very much for the individuality of the uh, stocks themselves. Look, Intel, I wonder where that is, that, uh, that's been struggling. Look at that, 29.65, down 8 cents. And look at the chart of Intel. Just keep your eyes focused. Daily, weekly, monthly. Now watch SMHs. Daily, weekly, monthly. Very similar chart patterns in many ways. So Intel's a big, big part of it. I'll be right back. We'll look at GoPro and some other stocks as soon as I get back. And uh, uh, now the Dow's at 53, holding very well. S&P's up 8. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. 
For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting tfnn.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. I was just looking at silver here. Silver is down 12 cents. Um, it had a nice little uh, pop over the past couple of days um, from the 1460 area all the way to the 1580, what was that, 1590 peak F in the 120-minute chart, and then it pulled back. What, what has happened is that that, that nine-period moving average in the weekly at 15.85 is just really powerful. And until it's going to make a move to the upside that has legs, that is more A to B, uh, leg A than peak A, than leg B and peak B, etc., it's going to have to trade into the 16.30, 16.50 area and hold. It just needs that, at least. And 16.97 is the nine-period exponential moving average for silver. So, oh, I didn't finish my look at the commodities. Copper is really this, the leg, this Chapman Wave Roman Candle uh, weekly chart uh, from the 10th of July, that's last week. That wick, if copper at any point, the continuous contract goes below 2.47, well, watch out below. It's going to retest the lows at 2.38. If it trades there for two hours, two day, any two days during the week, it'll start to go even lower. So I'm watching this real closely. It got repelled at the 200 period moving average in the peak. Look at this, how many times you can see peak Ds. Look at this. Right there's the down arrow. Most obvious lowest low bar. And then you count each successively higher peak. A, B, C, D. Put in a down arrow because the technicals failed and the price under the 200 period in, uh, 
exponential moving average in the 120 minute chart at 2.57 that's copper this is not good so okay now there are a couple of things i need to look at the dollar hgx that's the housing sector housing sector let me just squeeze this a little bit is making a, a cup formation it's actually almost like a cup and a little mini handle there this is the uh, actually it looks like the chart of was it toll brothers yeah actually toll brothers is acting very well it looks like it wants to go 39 31 and retest the uh, recovery high at 40.33 it's acting very nicely so this is peak did not do this the other day um 77 so this is a b c d a b c and we're in leg d right now looking quite good now i'm, I'm pleased because the hgx was starting to fail the other day it had a nice spring back to make that cup formation right there's the cup formation what is a cup formation it looks exactly like a semicircle, and then it tries to break the top side so that's the uh, uh hgx very important that it's doing well here and then wood which is the iShares, the global ETF on um, lumber and uh, lumber and timber, uh, forestry products. So that's um, trying to balance, but it's really not that successful. If you look at this, it looks a little bit like the New York Stock Exchange. And that's one of my concerns here. Is that let me see where it is today. The New York Stock Exchange, NYA.X. Look at this. Oh, nice candle today. Good. Good follow through. So that's very important because if it started to fail right here, and well, the day's out, I'm still expecting there could be a pullback later today, just a kind of hesitancy. And then the candle tomorrow is going to be very important by at four o'clock. What happens to the daily candle? But in the meantime, back at the range, you've got a rally that could take you to this trend line right there, which is a trend line that says at 11, the trend line that says, at 10,984, up 40 right now. The big resistance, let me put this dash line, Chapman Wave inside track. Let's just put that right there so you can see very clearly what it has to overcome. That's the area. So um, the New York Stock Exchange over the rest of the week, going into next week, has the challenge of breaking into the 11,070s. Very strong resistance all the way up to 11,060s. So 11,080. All of a sudden, you're looking at something very different, and that will really improve the weekly chart. And I can actually draw in. I'll start to draw it in now. A Chapman wave inside wedge, and that's the pattern that we always look for, right there. When you break decisively above the resistance, let's go to the outer level. Should we go to the inside? Well, first we'll go to the inside. But normally, I'd, I'd like to take it, be safe, go to the outer level there. But I'm going to do this for now because there are three points of contact. And that says, yep, it's the same thing. 10,020 starts a little bit of a breakout, but it's really that level we were looking at before. But that's the falling X formation. That's where you can make an arch and turn down, or you can break out, make a V-shaped recovery. And that could take you to leg D. Oh, I wanted to talk about that for a moment. Is there a chance that now, in the summertime, rather than in the fall, we start to move up in the New York Stock Exchange to go to your leg D, not yours, the New York Stock Exchange leg D. That's the question. So this is what I'm going to be covering Monday night a week. And we're looking at the charts that have held best. I mean, this is the long term charts. I'm going to be looking at the charts that have a wave count that suggests that any decline in this particular period should have fairly limited downside risk. <clears throat> Why? Because if the New York Stock Exchange starts to trade underneath the low of December of 2014 at 10,360, that's 600 points lower, I would have to consider that that's going to be a C minus. You have to have a restart. And rather than just a pullback towards this low right here, the low of, the, of December, uh, what did I say, 360? Wait a minute. Yeah, to, to hold the lows that went into that, which would be above 360, like 10,400. That's really what I'd be looking at. Well, a 400 point decline, that's a pretty big decline, even if you were going to come back later. So I'm going to be talking about that. I'm going to be talking about automobiles, uh, sentiment, international affairs, the parallel between certain key events. Remember, there was that book that I spoke about uh, by Bill Bryson, 
called uh, One Summer America, 1927, um, when those four bankers from around the world met in Long Island to discuss interest rates, and it had a repercussion that is said, I don't know if it's a fact, but it's said that their meeting was, well, Bill, uh, but he's not an economist, Bill Bryson makes the contention there that their meeting was the, the death now of the stock market. I, I, you know, I don't know if I can go that far, but in the meantime, it's an in interesting concept, and I'll be looking for similar actions that are taking place. So this is for subscribers. Go to the front page of TFNN, and I'll just show you right here, TFNN right there. And you want to go right to, whoops, right to new Basil webinar. Basil Chapman follows up on his popular 1920s webinars. And what it's going to be saying, I, you know, let me, let me make this real clear. I still anticipate somehow or other, I'm not sure how it's going to happen or why it's going to happen, that this market goes to higher highs and it does that going into 2016. Some of it now I can start talking about. I've, I've spoken about it only very briefly and mostly in, in um, webinars or more private private conversations because I didn't want it to be perceived as, as uh, a political statement. But I can talk about it now. And that is, I believe that in the Obama uh, two consecutive term presidency, it'll only be in 2016 that we can see something that was similar to the Clinton presidency, where January of 2000, a top was made in the Dow and March the most important indices, the NASDAQ and the semiconductor index and the S&P made their highs. Whoops, I just said the SMHs. I believe the SMHs did. Maybe just a tad late. Let me just double check here. Um, squeeze, 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 squeeze. That was, in fact, June. That's right. I thought it was a little later because they just started the, the SMHs. Isn't that amazing how that works? In May, after the market top, in May of 2000, and yet you still went to that high of 100.20. We are still way under that high in the SOX index. So um, I'm going to be talking about that. And, and what I see, this, this goes socioeconomically and politically. Now, when I say politically, I'm not saying uh, vote Democrat, vote Republican, vote anything. What it's just saying is the parallels. Remember Clinton... No one spoke about the Clinton uh, cascade into 2001. It was immediately uh, George Bush's uh, baby. And that's really what happens very often when these things go down. Look at Hoover. Hoover did a bunch of things. Some of them actually were quite courageous. And yet Hooverville is, uh, you know, he's known as uh, the president that was really instrumental uh, in the major turn down. So these things happen. But... I'm going to be talking about it in, in, in the context of things that have happened, things are, that are happening, world events, etc. So I'm, I'm hoping to put it into the, into the context, and I'll just grab this chart right here, even though this is the daily, I'm really going to talk about it in the weekly and monthly uh, charts. And what the, all we can look at here is to say, hey, I, I don't know what everybody's making a fuss about. This is just a, a, a narrow trading band. And put it into the context of a monthly chart. Let's go first to the, to the weekly chart. The Dow, look, this is a very big rollover, right? You can still get your one big spike to the upside and then come right back down. But what it's saying is that we've been in a trading range. It's getting harder and harder to make all-time highs. That's really the issue that I've been trying to talk about uh, all of into into the end of 14 going into 15. And if you look at the chart, that's kind of, look, look the technicals have been failing. There was one spike in the, in the stochastic right to the high of 18,351 in May. And lo and behold, even that couldn't hold, couldn't, um, um, hold in price. And it kept tumbling down, the stochastic. But the on-balance volume has held. The relative strength is somewhere inside here, whereas there it is. Relative strength has been getting lower and lower and lower since since back uh, in December of 2014. So you can understand why in the context of the markets, 
I've been saying that there still is very limited upside, but it's the way we handle the downside. And that's what's really important. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, that's, that's my mantra. That's my theme. So if this is leg A and we're going to go to a B, a C, and a D, we won't make a top in the Dow until next week, at minimum next week. But wait a minute. If you're talking about the VIX index, the VIX index has a way of pulling back in the weekly chart that when it has its major thrust from going up to down and breaks the nine period exponential moving average, that black line in the weekly chart, it stays under for a while. I want to keep that in mind. And that's the reason why it was so important to close today and the whole action today going into tomorrow and the next day is going to be really important. Why? Because if we're only in leg A, there's still plenty of time to buy stocks. We have plenty of time to make your choices and put your stops in and see if we're going to continue higher. If, in fact, that, and remember, it's really important with the volatility index, make a big deal about it. The volatility index has to make higher highs and higher lows with a dark cloud cover. We've got one right now, a dark cloud cover. Um, that is bad news. And that bad news can only come into a, a, a climax and then it has to rest. You can't just have bad news, bad news, bad news. It just doesn't work that way. It's got to filter in and then filter out like the sun on, on, a, on a hazy day where you suddenly see the sun and then it goes back. And that's the bad news. And as the bad news comes, you've got to see that volatility index rallying because that is descriptive of, of uh, this is my own interpretation. A rallying volatility index suggests selling pressure in the market. A declining volatility index Im implies buying pressure. That's what we're seeing today. So, okay, now let's go to a couple of other, and I'm going to be discussing that in the context of how, what sectors to be lightening up on still, and what sectors to start incrementally buying in. And I think we're getting a way clearer picture now. This week, last week was a very important week for parameters. This week is a very important week for the sieve factor. What pieces of grain are still big enough to hold in the sieve? What are just falling through? What stocks? Let's look at the XLV. XLV, which is the um, healthcare industry, so S&P Select Healthcare Spider Fund, trying to break out, trying to go to a new high. A new high here will be A, B, C, D. It'll be a leg D if it goes just a fraction high. 76.66, today's high, 76.66. Today's high is 76.45. You've got yourself 12 cents to break to a new high. Now, what, 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 about, the, what about the wave count? Does it recycle? Is this now A, B, and that'll be C if there's a new one, or is it a brand new A? Well, I always try to be a little conservative in my, my notations, so I will probably do it as an overlapping wave, um, as a parallel wave count. But the MACD was pulling back. The stochastic had gone under 80% and is still only at 78%. So this is towards the end of a move, but that doesn't say it's the end of a move. Towards the end of the move could still go for a couple of weeks. It's a weekly chart. You only need another three, four bars, and what do you have? A whole month. And what will happen is that the monthly recycles, if it makes a new high, it doesn't recycle, it extends leg F. Very interesting. I'll be back. Dow's up 50, S&P's up 8. take a hands-on approach to managing your investments. And whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus 
prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Let me just write this down. H-E-D-J. Hedge. H-E-D-J. Trading at 64.12 by 22 cents. Wisdom Tree Europe Hedge. I was asked about this. So the daily chart is in leg A, and it needs to spiral into the 65s at 64.30. It needs to get there within the next few days. And if it does that, all of a sudden, you're looking at the weekly chart, that falling axe formation after PT being very positive because 64.13 is the, uh, 64.12 is the nine period exponential moving average. What's important is that the way I'm counting this to be, I suppose to be conservative, I should say that's a potential uh, instant restart, an unconventional one, and this is deep, but actually it's really a peak C that was made in the monthly chart, and that suggests there's a really good chance that the Wisdom Tree Europe hedge could actually move higher. And if it moves higher, it could take out the 68.72 level for leg D. And that would suggest a bunch of things going on, because if this is going higher, it also suggests the Europe stocks, the European stocks should be going, uh, country stocks should be going higher in this environment. 
I'm looking at the EEM, that's the emerging markets. That doesn't look all that great. So the question that Jen is, Basil, were you ever going to get a 10% correction? And the answer is, absolutely, we will get a 10% correction. So the next question is, when? And that's the, that's the, uh, yeah, that's really the question. Why? Because if you can continue in this trading band and we're going to run into the upside for another couple of weeks and then come back down again, the 10% correction could come from 1840. That's 18,400, 18,390. And then you can go to the low of 17, uh, what was it, 17,465 was the low. Well, that's only a thousand points. That's not yet your 10% correction. So it means that you'd have to go all the way back down to, that's why I'm saying that if you take out that low, this is the bar that has um, support. This bar right here, the bar of uh, the 6th of February with a low of 17,037 and a high of 17,951, uh, where we were just, uh, what, um, yesterday. So um, this is going to be very interesting because there is a determination to um, complete buy programs uh, in, in uh, the funds and they constantly are buying the dips and they've been rewarded. They've absolutely been rewarded for buying the dips. Everyone's been rewarded for buying the dips if it's in the areas of uh, the, the best of uh, the best sectors or the best stocks of the sectors and look at this you've got a situation now where if we look at the nya.x that's the new york stock exchange um it's got a lot a lot to go still to break out and the weekly dust looks like it's going to make an h formation really I, i'm drawing this in looks like at some point right there it's going to turn around and that's going to be the big test but that could take another week or so. This is a weekly chart. So that means you could, in fact, get to 11,070 and not continue higher to that leg D in the monthly chart. So there are, we have never been in a situation like this where you've gone up for six and, a, six and a quarter years. And in fact, the best that you can do is just go sideways rather than really correcting. Uh, certainly the New York Stock Exchange from 11,254 to 11,000 to 10,622, uh, well, even that is not. So this is going to be very, very interesting. So all I'm, I'm suggesting here is that if you have long positions, let's say you have funds that you always put money into, no matter what, and then you have other portfolios that, that you trade or you do other things with. My strong suggestion has been, because I see us going to new all-time highs, regardless of what the pullback is later on, is to keep those positions. Try to you can you can ameliorate them by taking something off. That's really the way you do it. I would not get out of everything at this particular point, but we will get a correction at some point, and you've got to be ready for it. Hey, Basil Chapman, thanks for being here. Check out the front page of. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This is TFNN.